when we're going to invite folks in to join us, right? So This is it. We're doing so, it different. Yeah. Yeah. People who've been praying along, if you registered, uh, I think you're coming into the room now. If you didn't, glad you're online with us. People are coming in now. Welcome, hey, everybody. We'd love to see you. Turn your camera on as you come in, and uh, we can all see one another and say good morning. Yeah, and you can tell us in the chat where you're coming from. Uh, if a few of you want to just unmute and say where you're coming from, that'd be fine too. But it's great to see you. Hey, as we're coming in, um, if you're uh, so inclined and you'd like to be part of reading the liturgy this morning, uh, throw a virtual hand up and I'll send you a, a little part you can read in the chat. Can we do Will that work? Oh, yeah, that'll work. We got some Vancouver and Ohio. We got a uh, few folks. Oh, it's early in Vancouver. Good morning. Good early morning to you. Sorry, the sun's bright here. You can't see my face. It's uh, oh, we hit got me right. Hey. Good morning. Bur Birmingham, Alabama. Birmingham, glad you could join us. Well, while I, I'll let Jonathan sort of work out the uh, readings there, and uh, I'll say a few things just to get us going this morning. We, we, you know, we've been doing these morning prayers on the first of each month, and a lot of y'all join us each uh, every month when you can, and, and some folks might be new. Uh, we're using our common prayer book, which is in many different forms and fashions. This is the big thick edition. We've got a smaller pocket edition. Uh, there's a the website commonprayer.net where you can find a lot of the prayers and liturgy. Um, there's also a phone app and we are very aware that the phone app is a little outdated, which is one more little incentive to not update your phone and just keep the old one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because when you get a new one, uh, it's a. It's of course, there's a, lots of other things that won't work for you if you don't update your. Yeah, that's that's true, but uh, it, but Shane's uh, holding out. Bless his heart. <laughs> and we're we're trying to. Get, it's it's very costly to do an update of the app, and uh, um, but we're we're thinking about that. And if you know anybody that wants to give us little funds, we made it free, so we're we're uh, scrounging to try to make that happen. But meanwhile, we, we love doing it together online. And this we each month we usually have a guest, but we thought at the end of the year here, or for us, you know, it's the beginning of the new year of Advent and, uh, the birth of Christ. So we, uh, have you as our guests and we're going to have some time where folks, um, where, when we usually share, we're, uh, just giving you a heads up. Those of you that are on zoom here, can share a little bit about how you've been doing prayer or, uh, you know, think we'll have a little time for conversation. Uh, but I, I'll tell you a few things going on just before we get dive in here. And Jonathan, you doing okay with getting the, uh, the, the, uh, yeah, we're getting there? folks lined up here. If you, it, we still got a couple of pieces. If you want to, uh, read, just shoot me a, 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 a DM over here or, um, uh, or say so in the chat and we'll get to you. Somebody asked in the chat what the app's called, Shane. It's called Common Prayer. Uh, and it, it's still available in the uh, Google store, I guess, if you, you know, if you use an Android version. But uh, as he was saying, uh, they've taken it out of the app store because it doesn't work on the newest phones, of the newest iPhones. Yeah, and there is a, a book of common prayer as well. It was really funny. I don't know if you saw this interaction on the social media where somebody said, I thought that the, that the book of common prayer was older and that Martin Luther had written it or something. And uh, so I, I got I got involved in that little conversation. It was awesome. I said one of the, my favorite points was when I gave this to, you know, the Archbishop of Canterbury, uh, Justin Welby, it, right after he showed me the desk where, you know, the... the <laughs> you show you where Thomas Cranmer worked on earlier. Yeah. That's right. I brought you a gift, man. Uh, but like the cool thing is it's building on hundreds of years of ways the church has prayed together. So this is this is a, a holy project. And we'll tell you a little bit more about, I think for John and I, it was a good, great excuse to think back and thank all the people who were a part of this. So we'll, we'll do that. You know, some of them are not with us anymore, right, John? And Phyllis Tickle and uh, Richard Twist were both uh, instrumental in, in kind of shaping common prayer. So uh, yeah, and each month we remember uh, one of the 
marks of discipleship. So this month we're thinking of uh, the abandoned places, locating our lives in the abandoned places. And we sort of think about Jesus's birth itself, you know, kind of embodies that uh, uh, moving out of the comfort of heaven and being born um, homeless with no room in the end, being born a, in a brown skinned body as a refugee. And so all of that is part of this season of Advent. We've got a little blurb about Advent, um, the, the weeks that are leading up to, to Christmas here. And uh, um, so all that's in today's morning prayer. Just a couple other things before we get going is, one, we're doing a book club every month at Red Letter Christians. And this month, John, and I don't know if you know this, we, we, we just confirmed that uh, Diana Butler Bass is going to be our guest. And we're oh, reading that's good. Freeing Jesus. How about that? So Freeing thinking, Jesus. That's a nice one. Yeah. It's a good Advent little Christmas thing. We're going to be thinking about Jesus and who better to do it with than Diana Butler Bass. So I uh, I'm getting a hold of that book, and you you can too, and join Diana at the end of the month. We'll be talking about it together. Uh, the other thing we got going is we're going to do some caroling. John, are you ready? <laughs> the 16th. Uh, uh, <laughs> the, the 16th of uh, December, we're going to have Tony and Peggy in their retirement community, and we're going to have folks kind of all over that will join online for a virtual Christmas caroling time. So save the date on that bad. That's uh, December 16th. And if you are good at the singing thing and you got a little group you can get together, give us a heads up and we'll we'll give you a link to, you know, sing one of the songs or lead us in song. Um, there's one of the things that we'll remember this month is the anniversary of the Sandy Hook shooting. And we're remembering those, you know, just last night uh, or yesterday mm -hmm. in, in Michigan, um, another mm -hmm. school shooting um, that uh, has left many people injured and three people dead at, at this point. And, um, and Sandy Hook was one of those moments where our country said never again. And uh, we've let it happen again and again. So we'll, we're, we're going to do a special viewing of a film called uh, we are Newtown, and uh, uh, it's a real powerful little 20 minute film and, and discuss it together on the anniversary of Sandy Hook. Uh, so those are a few of the things going on this month. And as far as the liturgy, we're going to remember Charles uh, de Foucault today. We'll read about him in just a second. There's several things about El Salvador that are in our prayers these, this month. The, the massacre of the Marion Old Sisters and the Jesuits. Uh, the El Mazzotti massacre as well. Those are two different days in December that we remember the struggle in El Salvador. Uh, we remember St. Nicholas this month, of course. Uh, John, I mean, what, what is it? The, 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 the legend is that we get our stockings from this uh, uh, fourth century St. Nicholas story, right? And, uh, yes, where Nick, they say, they say uh, there was a family, you know, poverty in the history of the world and today, you know, drives people to desperation. And there's a story that uh, there was a family there where he was bishop that uh, was going to sell some of their children into slavery in order to survive, you know, so that they could feed the others. And uh, he uh, took some of the church's money and threw it in through the window. I guess some people say he stuck it in a sock and threw it in through the window. Uh, so, so yeah, that's how we get to the old St. Nick. This is the real St. Nick. Yeah. yeah. I was talking to my sister and uh, sister-in-law and they're, they're uh, Southern Baptist, you know, and, but they were saying that they really enjoy learning about the saints, you know, and for some folks, like we got, we all got different ways that we think of the saints, you know, especially Catholics and Protestants and different traditions, but uh, um, learning about St. Nick or St. Valentine, or, you know, some of the saints that we have in here through the year, part of that is just to humanize these things that get commercial commercialized and become kind of folklore and to really see that these are real people. So, yeah. you know, maybe, maybe spread the word on, on uh, uh, the six, you know, that this is a day that the whole church remembers St. Nicholas that this, you know, uh, it's not just black Santa Claus, uh, Leroy Barber out there in Portland. Uh, <laughs> have you seen him, the poor, the black Santa, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's try to, introduce our kids to this cloud of witnesses that uh, has come before us. So we got Nicholas, we got Ambrose, Martin, DePoris, uh, Thomas Merton, we remember this month, John of the Cross, 
got that, that got that great line. Uh, it's the cracks that let the light come in. Uh, so that's John of the Cross on the 14th. Then we get into the Christmas season. Remember Stephen, who was martyred, and we remember as a powerful way of remembering the the children that um, were killed uh, from Herod's kind of wrath as as Jesus was born. So we remember the holy innocents, and that as beautiful as a Christmas story is, that. Um, it, it wasn't a, a great day for a lot of families that um, uh, suffered so tragically from the kind of violence of the em empire as Jesus was born. And then there's watch night, right, Jonathan? You want to say a little bit about that? You, you, you got any plans? 31st? Well, watch night is always, um, uh, you know, an, an opportunity to wait and watch for the coming of the new year. You know, the, the great tradition in the Black church tradition is uh, you know, goes back to uh, Emancipation Day, the first Emancipation Day when uh, folks waited for the, uh, you know, the new year and the news that the Emancipation Proclamation would be official. But um, it's, a, it, it's a beautiful tradition and often a time when we recommit ourselves uh, in the Poor People's Campaign to the work of liberation in the year to come. So this watch night will be looking forward to June 18th when we hope to gather a historic mass poor people's assembly on the mall in Washington. Um, oh, longing for that freedom. That's a, that's a important tradition to be part of. Yes, sir. So uh, you got your readers there. We got people all over the place. Thanks for telling us where you're from. You can keep it coming. looks like we got uh, like a dozen different states and several countries going on. So thanks for joining us. And uh, I think we're ready, Jonathan, if you're ready. Are. We have readers and um, uh, please do if you're, if you've uh, agreed here in the chat to read, just jump in when we get to your part. We're going to uh, pray the office for December 1st together. And when we get to the prayers for others, we'll have a little time to testify together for those of us who are on here. So look forward to that. Uh, today is December 1st, and we are remembering Charles de Foucault. While working in the North African desert after a dishonorable discharge from military service, Charles de Foucault was impressed by the piety of Muslims and experienced a dramatic recovery of his Christian faith. He spent a number of years in a Trappist monastery before hearing the call to a new monasticism among the working poor. I no longer want a monastery which is too secure, he wrote. I want a small monastery like the house of a poor workman who is not sure if tomorrow he will find work and bread who with all of his being shares the suffering of the world. Though Foucault died in solitude, the little brothers and sisters of Jesus, inspired by his life and witness, have started communities of service among the poor and outcast around the world, and in fact have revived some of the uh, uh, ancient monastic spaces. When we were in Italy several years ago, we visited an old monastery that the little uh, brothers and sisters of Jesus have uh, have reestablished a community in, in, mm. in Florence. So I hung out with them uh, in New York. There's a little community there. Cool. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Uh, Y'all can stay on mute so we don't have a cacophony, but let's sing together. Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. May we cry the gospel from the rooftops, both with our words and with our lives. A reading from Psalm 8. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what is man that you should be mindful of him? The son of man that you should seek him out. 
You have made him but a little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor, and you give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. May we cry the gospel from the rooftops, both with our words and with our lives. The reading from the prophet Isaiah. The vision of Isaiah, son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and listen, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I reared children and brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner and the donkey its master's crib, but Israel does not know. My people does not understand. Ah, sinful nation, people laden with iniquity, offspring who do evil, children who deal corruptly, who have forsaken the Lord, who have despised the Holy One of Israel, who are utterly estranged. Why do you seek further beatings? Why do you continue to rebel? The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot, even to the head, there's no soundness in it, but bruises and sores and bleeding wounds. They've not been drained or bound up or softened with oil. Your country lies desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. In your very presence, aliens devour your land. It is desolate as overthrown by foreigners. And daughter Zion is left like a booth in the vineyard, like a shelter in a cucumber field, like a besieged city. If the Lord of hosts had not left us a few survivors, we would have be been like Sodom and become like Gomorrah. May we cry the gospel from the rooftops, both with our words and with our lives. Charles de Foucault prayed, Father, I abandon myself into your hands. Do with me what you will. For whatever you may do, I thank you. I am ready for all, I accept all, Let only your will be done in me as in all your creatures. Amen. Well, we, um, we always pause here for prayers for others. And since we've started doing this online, we've been having guests where we sort of turn our prayer into a conversation. And uh, we thought this month, uh, since so often uh, those of you who are praying with us are just uh, invisible <laughs> to us who are on the screen here, uh, that we'd open it up and invite folks in, which I think is a great opportunity for, um, for us to hear from you uh, what you've been praying for or what this prayer experience has uh, looked like for you, what it's meant to you. I think we just want to have some kind of testimony in that regard. So um, uh, feel free to uh, let that be kind of an open prompt, uh, but uh, unmute yourself and and chime in. We'd, we'd, we'd love to just be in conversation about what this prayer time uh, means to us in our various places. Hi, this is Robin from Indianapolis. Well, hello, Robin. Hey, Robin, I think we might have lost your audio there. There you go. No, I have going. to work during the day to be on live. Oh, hey, I'm from Indianapolis. I'm a palliative care nurse, and I can't usually be on live, but I always watch afterwards, and I love it. Well, so good to be praying with you, and uh, thanks for your work there. I imagine there's some praying that goes along as you're uh, walking with folks through those transitions. Yeah, when I wash my hands into each room, I say, come Lord Jesus, every time. Hmm. And he does. Amen. We see in the chat there that Kendra has offered to pray for the, the uh, folks in the school shooting yesterday. We'll do that for sure, Kendra, in just a, a little bit. Uh, uh, well, let's hear from a few other folks that maybe, maybe want to say hey or share about what's going on. 
This is Paula uh, from Ohio. And um, one of the things that grounds my prayers is what's going on in the larger church. We have a university student um, here from Ethiopia, who's a part of the Messeri Christos Church, which is the Anabaptist community there. And um, we've been praying fervently for peace in Ethiopia. Mm. And he just told me recently that the government is requiring people to take up arms in order to defend themselves um, against the coming rebels. And so the Messeri Christos Church followed Jesus in the way of nonviolence. And so his father and their family and the other members of their church have said, no, we will not take up arms. We will not fight our neighbors. We will not fight against the rebels. And so um, when we get caught up in sort of the petty disagreements here in small town Ohio, um, I think of Ermias and the church in Ethiopia and the really desperate things that they are facing and yet wanting to walk in the way of faithful. So I would just invite you to pray for the peace of Ethiopia and for our brothers and sisters to endure the face of this suffering. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. This is, this is Thomas. I, uh, we, my family and I, we've been, we've been praying to, uh, give up a little bit more than, than, uh, uh, than we're comfortable with, uh, as a family to, to go out and actually do, uh, God's work in our community, uh, to give up that comfort in this, uh, this book of common prayer, uh, that, that y'all uh, put together, uh, has really challenged us, right, more so than anything else, to 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 go on that journey uh, and try to give up give up that comfort. So uh, we could, you know, I, I don't know if this is a prayer request. Uh, uh, you know, if I could, if if we could get a prayer for our family to uh, uh, to do that, because I, I read in there, you know, work part time, right, and uh, and uh, yeah, do more for others, and, and that's a prayer we've had. Uh, you know, for, for our family in particular. So uh, yeah, that's, I, I appreciate this. This is a, it's just challenging for, for us uh, to read and that's good. That's good. So thank you. Thank you for that testimony. And um, indeed it's a, you know, it's a gift of the, uh, the liturgy that it brings us again and again into the communion of saints and I appreciate you saying, because it's been my experience too, it's often challenging and a call to reorient our lives, you know, when you, uh, when you sit with these, uh, these lives of those who've gone before us and uh, consider, you know, how, how they uh, follow Jesus in their time and in their place and what it means for us to follow it today. Uh, being immersed in that story is the gift of the liturgy, so... Thanks for joining us. It's good to be part of it together. Anybody else want to jump in and, and then we'll uh, give, yeah, Elizabeth. I'd, I'd like to pray for all caregivers of every sort, mm -hmm. caregivers in nursing homes, caregivers in hospitals, caregivers everywhere. Right. It is an immense wait to be a caregiver so that's just any caregiver anywhere thank you Thanks. i wanted to just um i i had the book for a lot of years and i kind of was doing some other things but i came back to it when my buddy jason biasy was on a couple weeks ago or a couple months ago i guess uh, and I've been doing it ever since. And we live in a place that's actually really hard to kind of meet neighbors. I'm on the campus of a university. It's really transient. Mm. And we live in high density buildings, which are not conducive to community building. So uh, I've really enjoyed coming back to it and, and just remembering that there's a whole bunch of people around the world praying the same things and reading the same things each day. Uh, so I've, I've just been kind of grateful for the communion of saints that uh, the liturgy reminds us of. So thanks for doing that. Absolutely. 
maybe while we uh, we'll give one more space for anybody else that wants to say hey or share what's on your heart. But uh, you know, we, we might just be helpful to give a shout out to some of the folks that helped us with the book, Jonathan. I we we tried to get Anuma on, who was one of the other curators, and she's living, I think, in Nigeria now, isn't she, Jonathan, over there? And uh, different she, time zone. Yes, yeah, she and Jonathan and I worked and uh, it's it's fun to think back because we had dozens of people that were kind of in different little committees right so there was a song group that was gathering songs from all kinds of different traditions and that's uh, uh like the servant song i think that's a anabaptist song in john the mennonite song and so we got hymns we've got uh paul is saying yeah it is over there amen and uh we got you know some of the old spirituals and freedom songs and uh, the only ones we couldn't afford were the newer ones. The older it is, the freer it is. <laughs> um, and then we had artists. A lot of these, you know, the, I don't know if you read the fine print, but all, this, you know, was original art. Our friend Jesse Walls did the different languages of the Lord's Prayer and the most spoken languages of the world. And um, and then uh, we, we've got uh, Orthodox artists that created some of the the images of the that are in the beginning of each month and uh, had friends like Richard Twist that I mentioned. He's, uh, you know, incredible brother, great friend and passed away suddenly, uh, really young age. Uh, but he helped us with to remember some of the First Nations and Native Indigenous dates that are important. And we had other folks that are helping us remember um remember history well you know and it, it's it's wild because now with all the culture wars around critical race theory and stuff you're kind of like like that's what we're trying to do in this book is tell the the good and the bad of history and remember the 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 dates that we we dare not forget lest we repeat them and remember the day you know the great parts of the struggle for freedom and liberation um so and it's been, you know, when's it been like over 10 years, right, Jonathan, since we did it. So we we're trying yeah. to get a new edition. So because, you know, you think of all that's happened in the last 10 years, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement. I mean, you know, George Floyd, all these dates that that uh, I mean, even Michael Brown, I don't think it had been killed then. So we want to like give a little update at some point. So we're, we're fighting hard to get a new edition out <laughs> and we would love your input, you know, if there's songs that we can get a hold of that we might need to add or other dates or things but uh it's been a collaborative project and it's been a really holy project so we're glad that it's meaningful to you and uh you know uh, i think it was who was it somebody was telling me you know we we write our we do our our best writing or work when when it's coming out of our own um longing and spiritual hunger and that's really what this was is for mm -hmm. jonathan and i and i think a lot of us were trying to figure out how to pray together um, across different denominations and, you know, kind of spiritual uh, streams. And so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been really wonderful to get to do it together. And any, anything else, John, and like, as far as there's, there's a lot that we did. Well, I think we should it. also, we should also remember uh, brother Andy rain. Oh brother yeah. Andy rain from North Umbria who uh, came across the pond and, uh, helped us in so many ways because uh, he had been uh, instrumental in crafting the uh, Celtic daily prayer uh, and had learned, uh, you know, many of the liturgical traditions. Um, yeah, grateful for for him and for the way that we learned in that process that, you know, all liturgies build on a long history of, you know, people who've uh, worked on this before. Fixed our prayer goes back to uh, you know, the uh, uh, Jewish communities, you know, uh, in, in the diaspora. And um, uh, we learned it from them and Christians have uh, passed it down. And uh, it's, a, it, it's an incredible rhythm to get into because it really does invite us into that community. So grateful for all those folks across time and space. You mentioned Sister Phyllis Tickle. Um, I remember when we first talked to her about it, she said, um, she said, listen, boys, we ain't messing around here. This is, uh, this is the song that's sung around the throne of God, <laughs> which is a, a serious thing to consider. You know, if you're going to join that song, um, it's, uh, it's, it's important to, yeah, take the time to learn from all who've sung it before you. So glad to get to be part of that 
with all those folks in the past and with all of you here and those who are joining us online, it's a, it's a great gift to uh, be connected in these ways. Yeah, and you do sort of feel like uh, Brittany put there, you know, miss, we miss Phyllis, but you feel like she's smiling down on on all of it, you know. And uh, I remember oh, her yeah. telling us how she created her liturgy was they put uh, folding chairs out, like uh, it sounded like dozens of them and tried to, you know, because we're trying to compile things that are often in a cycle of three years of readings, you know, we're trying to put it together in a way that's linear and that you can, you know, do you do a daily prayer? Do you do a weekly? How do you do it? So we uh, we we kind of gleaned a lot of wisdom from Phyllis, bless her. Well, anybody else want to share anything before we uh, we'll, we'll lift up the prayers that we heard? And there's a few in the chats. There's some folks that are watching on Facebook, not on Zoom, that have put stuff in the chat. So we'll lift up our um, prayers in just a second. But um, we're it's awesome to see all your faces. We might try to do this again. I mean, we. It's, you know, the Zoom thing's kind of challenging because you want people that are watching it later to be able to see the conversation with our guests. So we're going to keep having guests, but we, we sure love seeing all y'all. So we'll, we'll keep uh, scheming on how we can do more of this. Anybody else want to share, raise your hand or unmute? Just come in here and uh, share anything or uh, in a second, we'll, we'll lift the prayers up that we've heard. John and anything else, man? Let's pray. Let's do it. So uh, why don't we do it a little differently? If you if you want to unmute and pray, you you can. And then in just a moment, we'll uh, do the Lord's Prayer in the closing uh, the, uh, from the, the daily office. So, Lord, we hear the prayer of Kindred and uh, Kendra and so many others uh, for the folks that are right now just. Um, having heavy hearts in Michigan. Um, and, I, and I think of my friend Jalen who went to school there and uh, was at the vigil last night. We think of all those who are still recovering in the hospital, uh, about a dozen people that were um, injured in that. And so we pray for the lives, the at least three lives that were lost uh, yesterday in this shooting and, and for the 15 year old uh, shooter that was responsible for this. We pray that you would heal the wounds of violence and all the other shootings over a hundred lives that were lost uh, yesterday in, in gun violence in the U S. And, and so we pray for, for uh, courage from our, our politicians. And we pray that we would be able to put feet on our prayers when it comes to gun violence and so many of these other issues, but particularly we lift that prayer um, that's been mentioned up. Lord, I'm reminded of your words in Isaiah that says, Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God, and Prince of Peace. Lord, as a teacher, I just pray for the other teachers that are part of Oxford High School. I thank you for your loving kindness to educate our youth. And Lord, I just pray that you would leave your perfect peace with them, not as the world gives, but as you give, it, give to you. Let not our hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. And Lord, there is so much fear surrounding this high school in the blessed season of Advent that you have come to be our Prince of Peace. So Lord, we lift up all of the social workers and counselors that will come together, the faith community, community that will come together to bring comfort to those students, their families, and the staff of Oxford Community Schools. Know that you are a patient and a loving God who continues to work to restore us to you. So Lord, may we be restored to you. May those who don't know you find comfort in your arms, your everlasting arms of the Abba Father. In Jesus' name. We pray with our sister Elizabeth this morning for all who are uh, caring for folks in their home, in their daily lives, in their work. And we pray in this country for an investment in the care economy with the uh, legislation that's in Congress right now mm. 
God give us resolve to pay people what they deserve for the work that they do day in and day out. Mm. Thank you for this time together, Lord, to pray. And we think of uh, your prayer, Jesus, that we would be one as you are one. And we pray for unity within the, the body of Christ. We pray that you would make us one as you are one so that more and more folks could know of your love, so that we could be light in the darkness and salt on the earth. So continue to shape us and form us. Thank you for the cloud of witnesses that have gone before us and we thank you for even those who helped us learn to pray for Phyllis and for Richard and for all the folks that um, over the centuries and, and even um, over the years in our life who, who have taught us what it means to be your people and to, to, to be people of prayer and also people of action. So thank you for uh, this little community online today for all those who are listening in and all the things that we've mentioned and all the things that we haven't mentioned that we we lift up to you and we we uh, pray that you would guide us in the days to come these these feel like pretty tumultuous times so give us courage give us joy give us all the fruit of your spirit that we we might um, be love where there is hatred that we might be faith where there is uh, doubt that we might be hope where there is despair thank you for jesus that we we remember this season in particularly, and we thank you, Jesus, for your, your love, for putting skin on and showing us uh, what God is like. So give us the courage to follow you. We pray all this in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now we pray together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Sometimes, Lord, it takes witnessing another person's commitment for us to realize our own lack of faith. Open our hearts to learn even from strangers who inhabit other faith traditions, what it means to be committed to you. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing. At the wonders he has shown you, may he bring you home rejoicing once again into our door. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us, y'all. We'll, we'll see you uh, on January 1st, if not before. <laughs> Indeed. Blessings.